Good afternoon and happy new year. In case you forgot my name, I'm Seth Butner, and I have the honor to serve as this year's president of the Rotary Club of Oakland. Founded in 1908, the Rotary Club is the third oldest Rotary Club of some 35,000 Rotary Clubs throughout the world. We are a community of 300 men and women from all walks of Oakland's civic, commercial, and community life, committed to the Rotary motto of service above self. I'd like to welcome you to our 5,322nd club meeting. For over 111 years, we have welcomed Rotarians and guests from around the world to our club meetings. We continue to do so virtually. So if you're a visiting Rotarian or if you're a guest of a Rotarian, please let us know by typing your name and the name of your club into the chat box located at the center bottom of the screen indicated by the red arrow on the slide you're viewing now. By doing so, we will be able to recognize you later in this meeting. Also, we recommend that all participants view the Zoom meeting by clicking the speaker view button located in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And if you have comments throughout the meeting or questions for the speaker, please use the chat button at the bottom of the screen for that as well. And now for our thought for the day, Rotarian Lou Regali. Thank you, Sess. Uh, my thought for today comes from the published works of a Mary Parker Follet, born in the late 1800s in Boston. She was considered an expert business consultant in group dynamics and was very a, a very early proponent of conflict resolution. She probably would have been a Rotarian if there was a chapter open in Boston at the time. Your quote is, we find the true man only through group organization. The potentialities of the individual remain potentialities until they are realized by group life. End of quote. Thank you, Lou, for setting the tone for the meeting with that reflective thought. Because we want to remain grounded and focused. We begin our meetings by jointly reciting our vision, which is <clears throat> together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. As you may have noticed in the pre-meeting slides, the thermometer for the Rotary Foundation participation showed us that 92% that's a record for my normal participation of 25 to 30% and up from 85% at our last meeting. Tremendous progress toward 100% participation that my president's challenge seek. Changing the culture of the club and just 10 members short of being recognized by the district as every Rotarian every year. Now the 10 or 15 or so Rotarians who have yet to pledge will be receiving a call from some of our members of the fundraising committee in the next two weeks as they finalize the campaign and celebrate the most successful campaign in the history of Oakland Rotary number three. Hats off to all of you for making it happen. Your gift to the Rotary Foundation will lead to our Carl Stuckey Rural Community Service Projects throughout the world and here at home. When we were last together before the holidays, we recognized our retiring executive director, Pat Williams. And it was a great meeting with our past president noting her unique qualities and thanking her for the past seven years. Pat, once again, thank you from all of us from the bottom of my heart. This week, we will begin the year with an update on our homeless efforts and an emphasis, our emphasis for this year and recognition of our history of women in Rotary before hearing from our mayor of Oakland, the Honorable Libby Schaaf. So set back and enjoy another of our great Civic Thursday meetings where you can catch a great speaker and get involved with Rotary where service above self exists. Now let's start the meeting with our Business Development Committee meeting sponsor this week, Rotarian Winter Williams and her company, Family Dog Walkers. 
Thank you, President Sess. Um, as many of you may know, I joined about two and a half years ago, but I was a business banker at the time, which I've done for over 20 years. Um, what you may not know is that on the side since 2014, I've owned a dog walking and boarding business. It was started by my ex-husband and now I'm the primary operator out of my home near Lake Temescal in Oakland. Um, I, I guess you would say I'm a renaissance woman of sorts because I'm also, as some of you, of you know, a, a music promoter and a financial feminist. And at some point in the far future, I'll um, tell you more about that. But today, I think it's the perfect time for us to talk about dogs, you know, lighten the mood a little bit after yesterday. Um, hopefully you'll see that there are some links that have been dropped into the chat. Um, when you need some levity and friendly face, furry faces, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You'll see that I have a passion for posting pics and making goofy videos with music of dogs. <laughs> There's nothing political. Um, it's just all about happy dogs. I also have the link to my website, which I'm still working on, but you can see there the products and services that I provide and a little bit about myself um, and what differentiates me from other people in my industry. Um, I did want to talk about the industry a bit. Um, many, uh, if whether you have dogs or not, you might have noticed um, there's been quite a bit of hardship for dog walkers and care providers. Many businesses have closed, people have had to move, and other people are coming into it that um, are not licensed, bonded, insured, they don't have training, they don't have safe facilities, they don't make sure that they're um, canine clients have been vaccinated. These are things that um, professionals do. And like many other industries, we ask that um, you remember that as th when things start to open and you plan trips and, and you're picking your boarding facility um, or other care, you know, maybe ask what the care provider was doing during COVID, if they closed down when they were mandated to, if they've taken precautions and what so forth. Um, it really is an industry where it makes a difference if people are mindful. And I just realized I forgot to start my stopwatch, so sorry. <laughs> um, so that's my plea on the dog industry. Um, Dogs have similar needs to ourselves. They need socialization, they need exercise and nutrition. And I've noticed a lot of dogs are getting cranky and anxious um, and not quite themselves being shut inside even if they're getting lots of love. So I ask, do please remember that they need that socialization and fitness, whether it's from you or someone else. I am not a trainer or a vet tech, but I uh, consider me more like a dog mama who is going to provide the same loving passionate care that you would if you could meet all of their needs, but you can't. Kids got to go to school and dogs need to get out of the house once in a while. So that's a bit about my business, family dog walkers. Um, again, oh, last thing. If you're musical, I created a playlist on Spotify that's all songs about dogs. So when your eyes need a break and your ears need a treat, pull that up and it's almost two hours of great music about dogs. So Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Quinter, <laughs> for telling us all about the family dog walkers. Uh, Past District Governor Ed Jellin, do we have any visiting Rotarians or guests? Wow, Sess, do we have visiting Rotarians and guests today? Uh, first of all, great to see everybody and wish everybody a happy and happier New Year. And I also wish on a personal note that we will never again uh, have to witness people inciting and participating in attempted mob rule to overrule our constitution and system of government in our country. Uh, I hope that was all right that I say that. And Go right I, ahead. Go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of guests, uh, we have a wealth of wonderful guests today. Uh, first, uh, visiting Rotarian, past president, Free Club of San Leandro, Diane Dorn. Welcome, Diane. We have a visiting Rotarian from the San Francisco Evening Club, uh, Catherine Marshall. We have a lot of guests. Uh, Keith Uriarte brings his guest, uh, Jason Toro, who is executive director of uh, Community Works here in Oakland. Uh, we have uh, Linda Mar Mandolini with uh, Eden Housing. 
We have uh, Ken Lupoff with the Oakland Parks and Recreation. We have Patricia Wells with the Oakland Housing Authority. Uh, Sean McCallum, uh, I think is the one who brought uh, Linda Mandolini with us. Uh, John Clausen brought a guest today, uh, Bruce Kwan, who's a retired uh, civil rights attorney. Uh, future President Mary Jong brought Paul Wong with him. Uh, our good member and friend Robert Kidd brought his wife, uh, Commissioner Joan Story. We have past presidents of our own club, uh, Dale Chamblin and Iris Brody Lopez. Ryan Spink, uh, Spink brought uh, Dave Cannon with him. And uh, Joe Garalka brought his wife, uh, Martha Garalka, with the Delta Antioch Club uh, visiting Rotarian. So I hope I didn't miss anybody. And thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoy our program. Thank you, Ed, and welcome to all the guests. As a recap, my first half year, I reminded you that we needed to work on membership. With all those guests, I guess we can do it. It is the one area that I must admit we had not performed as we had wished. So I remind me of you of my challenge to all to help me reach my goal in the second half of the year, bring in a new member. Uh, I need 35 of you to bring in a new member and share what Rotary's service above self does for you. To that end, we're inducting a new member today. He will be introduced by President-elect Dudley Thompson with two interesting facts about our newest Rotarian. Thank you, President Sess, fellow Rotarians and honored guests. Um, we can't do this every time for you, Sess, but we did hire our next member of the club. <laughs> Good. Um, I'm here to introduce Jesse Baudel today. Uh, Jesse uh, has been a longtime uh, employee of Guckenheimer, a food service company, and started as our new executive administrator in December. Um, the two really interesting, I will say he was a member of this, he's joining us as a transfer from the San Leandro Club where he'd been a member for four years and jumped all in. I mean, he's been to two international conferences all year. So anybody who's one or two year member, start thinking about going, traveling internationally. Two interesting facts. Jesse is a certified barbecue judge of the San Francisco of the Kansas City Barbecue Society, and he is an excellent barbecue chef. I reminded Jesse that one of my college buddies is a member of the Kansas City Club and won the state championship in Kansas uh, as a barbecue uh, chef too. Uh, the second fact is that as part of Guckenheimer, his former company, he rode in the first AIDS ride from San Francisco to LA, supporting many Guckenheimer employees in the San Francisco area who had AIDS at that time. Welcome, Jesse. Hope you have a wonderful time in our club and- uh, Thank you. All right, by accepting membership, Jesse, we're happy that you've chosen us, but by accepting membership, you have adopted our vision. Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities and in ourselves. And you've also agreed to conduct your affairs according to the Rotary four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship and will it be beneficial to all? You will receive your Rotary pin and we hope you will wear it with pride and ple find pleasure and fulfillment by attending meetings, participating in our service activities, all of which I know you will do and by contributing to the Rotary Foundation and the Oakland Rotary Endowment. So now it's my pleasure and privilege and honor to induct you as our newest member of the Rotary Club of Oakland. Let's give our newest member a warm Rotary welcome. Thank you, President Sess. Uh, past President Jack McAvoy, I understand that you have a few things to say about our membership. Jack? <laughs> Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Can you speak? Now can you hear me? Yes, that's good. Good. Today we're going to recognize five trailblazing women who have been members of Oakland Rotary for over 30 years. But first, a little history. In the mid 70s, questions about why women were not welcome as members of Rotary began to surface. The Council on Legislation voted down requests by representatives to include women as members in 1976 and 1980. 
Meanwhile, the Rotary Club of Duarte, California, admitted three women in 1977. Rotary warned them that if they did not expel the women, their charter would be pulled. Duarte refused, and their charter was pulled. The case wound its way through the courts for the next 10 years until the United States Supreme Court, with a unanimous decision, upheld a California Supreme Court decision that Rotary must allow women as members. Today, there are more than 280,000 women members representing 23% of the total membership of Rotary International. Rotary International will have its first female president in 2022 when Jennifer Jones takes the reins, 35 years after women were first admitted. How did our club deal with women in Rotary movement? Both in 1976 and 1980, our past president and past district governor, Ken Thompson, brought the request on the council, to, uh, the council legislation requesting a decision to include women. In the early 80s, there were several letters written by Oakland Rotarians supporting the move to include women members. These letters appeared in Rotary newsletters like our Live Oak around the country. I forward it to you. In 1984, a live debate discussing the admittance of women was our weekly program. It was such a timely issue, it was carried on radio throughout the Bay Area. There was a paper vote taken after the debate, and our club voted overwhelmingly to include women as members as soon as possible. The first day we could include women as members, we inducted six women. In the 26 years women have been become eligible to be president of Oakland Rotary, We've had nine female presidents, including President-elect Mary Gion. 43% of our club are women. We have the largest percent of female members of all of the large Rotary clubs in the United States. As is almost always the case, Oakland is ahead of the rest of the country. Our speaker today, Mayor Schaaf, joined Oakland Rotary in August of 1996, and look where she is today. Now, Let's hear from these remarkable women who will share what it was like in the early days and what Oakland Rotary has meant to them, starting with Gail Okuma. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, in 1987, I was the superintendent of schools in uh, Orinda. And uh, later I learned that the Orinda Club had anticipated that I would be their first woman uh, female uh, member in their Rotary Club. But in July, I changed positions and I became the superintendent of schools in Piedmont. My first uh, official duty was on July 4th to ride in the 4th of July parade. And at the end, when I got out of the car, there was a, a gentleman who introduced himself as Art Hecht. And he said, you should become a member of Oakland number three. And I said, okay. And that was it done. So over the years, I have really, really enjoyed Rotary, uh, particularly the ability to provide service, both internationally and locally. Internationally, I have been fortunate to travel with Oakland Three uh, Rotarians to Ghana and Vietnam, Guatemala, and many other countries around the world. At th those times, we've been able to find service projects and uh, conduct them through World Community Service and other committees. I also am appreciative of the tremendous friendships that I have developed in Rotary over the years. And uh, those have happened not only at the weekly meetings, but through committee work and uh, providing service locally. So one of my favorite things that I was doing right before COVID struck was uh, providing food to people at Laney College. And that was a terrific way to uh, work with fellow Rotarians in providing service locally. I'm deeply appreciative of these friendships. Uh, some of them have been over the decades and others are new, such as uh, a wonderful opportunity for all of us to join a Rotary Zoom every night on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday at five o'clock. And I encourage you to join, meet um, young and um, older Rotarians and get a perspective on lots of different aspects of what's happening. So I am so glad that I said yes and okay to Art Hecht. It's been a wonderful journey. And now I would like to introduce a past president, Carla Betts. 
Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Well, my first introduction to Rotary was when my husband joined Oakland Rotary in 1970. I remember how excited he was. Wally Bruner, who I don't know if any of you remember, but Wally Bruner sponsored him and uh, he was just excited to be, it was such a special honor for him to be a member of the club. Um, when women were first invited in, I was sponsored by Ray Jeanette, who was uh, our member from Chevron. And um, by that time, I'd already met quite a few of the members because we did have um, lots of activities where women were included, wives and uh, girlfriends and what have you. Um, over the years, I think the most important thing for me with Rotary, aside from the good works that we do, is the friendships that have been offered. And I feel like in the 30 years I've been a member of Oakland Rotary, I have 30 years of friends that I might never have had if I wasn't lucky enough to be invited to join this club. And our club is special. I've seen some others. Ours, our club is very, very special. So I'd like to introduce Shannon Hacklin. We'll tell you another version of good news. Thank you, Carla. So I was 24 years old and I had no idea what Rotary really was or that women had been prevented from joining. My sponsor simply said, hey, if you wanna join the best club in Oakland, join the Oakland Rotary Club. So, okay. I was a recent grad from UC Berkeley, a new entrepreneur and joining Rotary completely and literally changed my life in a million ways. Was I naive at the time? For sure. But Rotarians in Oakland rolled out the red carpet with welcome. So when did I realize that women were new? Well, ha, I went on the Reno trip. The rest of the district Rotarians on the Reno train were not quite so welcoming as the women boarded. Also, when I traveled to Central America, I was expected to literally hang out with the wives in a different room from the male Rotarians. Did I comply? Nah. Did Rotarians finally accept women in Rotary, even in Guatemala? Oh yes. I am proud that Oakland Rotary takes the lead in being radically inclusive as an example around the world. It has been the best experience really of my life. My pleasure now to introduce one of my partners. Here is past president Iris Brody Lopez. Wow, 30 years of women in Rotary. Um, I'm not gonna talk about all the things that everybody else has talked about, but early on I had two incredible advocates, uh, past presidents Art Hecht and past president Jack McAvoy. They saw talents in me that I'm not sure at the time I actually saw in myself, but because of them, I was selected as one of the first four mentors in the HOPE program. I participated in Camp Enterprise, which is now Enterprise Institute for uh, I think 13 years. And uh, I chaired service to seniors and I have been involved and chaired or co-chaired many of our CNR E committees. And under my watch as the 99th president, I am proud to say that we started the Oakland Reads program with OUS Day where we gave out three books to every uh, third grader. I am so proud of what we've all accomplished at Oakland number three. And I have friends that I know that I will have for the rest of my life because of this club. And now I think I'm handing it over to Mary Rutzer. Unmute. Unmute yourself, Mary. <laughs> You've got to speed it up here, Mary. I got a uh, little time left here. <laughs> You're on mute. Okay. Real quick. All right, real quick. As the last and certainly the least of this group of women, any one of them could run a small country, I simply want to say how incredibly fortunate I've been to be a part of the Rotary Club for the past 30 years. I, uh, when I joined, about 10% of the club were women. By and large, the guys were incredibly welcoming and we all had so many laughs. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase here because of Sess's um, time and just acknowledge that there were giants among us, people like Ark Hecht and Carl Stuckey and Jack McAvoy, who, as Iris said, saw things in us that we might not have recognized in ourselves. And they encouraged us to take ownership of various aspects of club projects and ultimately to assume leadership roles. As I said a long time ago, I will never be able to give back to this club what it has given to me. 
but I do plan to spend the rest of my life trying. Thank you all so much for this. Uh, Back to you, Seth. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all of you women. That's his tremendous work that we have done for women in Rotary. Uh, we have uh, messed up our time, I think, line. Peter Sears, uh, you are supposed to be talking now about housing and security task force, but it's now time. I think we're going to hold that for next week, maybe, and uh, go ahead with the mayor because we have the mayor and we don't want to disappoint the people who showed up to see the mayor. So, uh, Kimberly Miller. Will you like to introduce our speaker for the day? Thank you, President Sess, and Happy New Year, Rotarians. It's nice to see all of you. Our guest today needs no introduction. An Oaklander born and raised, she has been offering this community her best civic energy for many years. Working for city council, helping our schools, advising at the port, becoming a city council member, and finally the mayor. Mary Lee Bishaf leads our city at a truly unprecedented time. She has had to tackle the most pressing economic and social issues, including economic equality, police brutality, and systemic racism. Lack of trust in our institutions, and while doing that, juggling attacks from the president, disdainful of our city, and diverse forces here at home that are always pushing her for more, quite often understandably. And then there's the pandemic, of course. Mayor Schaff tackles it all with the spirit of innovation that's embedded in our Bay Area and the authentic heart that is unequivocally Oakland. Perhaps nothing embodies this more than the program that makes her most proud, the Oakland Promise, a cradle to career initiative that is helping inspire thousands of low income children to go from preschool to college or trades and to successful careers. You might know that she's so born and raised in Oakland that she was a personality, Raggedy Ann, to be precise, at Children's Fairyland. Hopefully, the park instilled a little magic in her because she's going to need it for the last couple of years that she's ruling Oakland. On a more serious note, since we are in the middle of a surging pandemic and places like Fairyland, um, our schools, our restaurants, and our other businesses that are shuttered and struggling, I am glad we can gather together here, albeit virtually, as Rotarians to hear from our mayor and to learn more about the state of our city, especially as it relates to homelessness, an issue that we all have chosen to focus on in Rotary this year. It's probably been said, but this is often the best attended Rotary gathering on Thursdays, and today for the first time it's virtual. I miss all of you so much. I can't wait to see you in person. Thank you for your support. And uh, I'm so proud to welcome our mayor. Welcome, Mayor Schaff. Oh, thank you so much, Kimberly. And absolutely, that fairyland magic has never worn off, nor should it. Rotarians, it is fabulous to be with you today. Uh, I count so many of you as friends, and I admire the vision and commitment that this club has always had to this community, but also what you bring to the global community through your service above self. Now I'm giving you a brief state of the city. I will uh, give to you a link to my actual official state of the city, which I delivered as a video uh, in just, just a few months ago. I hope you read it. It is not just me talking. It really captures the stories and the people that made such a profound difference in this year, 2020. So you're getting my version today. Now, listen, when we went into 2020, uh, I was feeling pretty great about Oakland's positive momentum. We had just celebrated our historic low in unemployment rate. We were seeing businesses move to Oakland, proud to claim us on their masthead. Blue Shield, PG&E had just announced, Credit Karma. We were seeing those cranes that had gone up reveal beautiful new buildings, just reinvigorating our skyline and our streetscape. And that construction not just meant new jobs and new businesses and economic activity in our city, but it also meant desperately needed housing. Uh, as we entered 2020, we celebrated that in just five years, we had added nearly 16,000 new units of housing. And we had doubled the rate of producing affordable housing 
housing that was legally protected for our most struggling residents to actually be able to live in this increasingly expensive Bay Area. I don't need to remind you what the beginning of 2020 felt like with a pop in downtown, new restaurants and bars opening all the time, excitement around a new ballpark on our waterfront and a boom in tourism as everybody wanted to get a little bit of that Oakland secret sauce. We even were addressing some of our longest and most persistent challenges. We launched the Great Pave, and I am happy to, to report that even despite the pandemic, we broke an all time record in the most number of roads repaved. And I don't need to tell you that Oakland really needed that. We also gained national recognition. This was at the beginning of 2020 for reducing gun violence, a 50% reduction that had been sustained for five years, nationally recognized thanks to the amazing work of our ceasefire initiative. And while we were definitely struggling with the, the moral outrage that is street homelessness in Oakland, something that we have seen just increase heartbreakingly, we were feeling optimistic. At the beginning of 2020, we passed an important milestone. We had doubled our shelter capacity and we were receiving recognition for some incredibly effective innovations. Our Keep Oakland Housed initiative was one of the most comprehensive homelessness prevention initiatives. And literally every year, it has been keeping between 1,700 and 2,000 people from getting displaced from the housing they have, from becoming homeless. We were also being recognized for our cabin communities, a rapid and very dignified uh, alternative to emergency shelter, where we were bringing actual communities of separate housing uh, where, that allowed people to go to bed at night behind a locked door with their partners, their pets, their possessions, and their privacy, not something in your traditional emergency shelter. And for all you budget geeks out there, Oakland was finally recognized for many of the financially responsible changes that we had been making over the years. We were awarded our highest credit rating that we had received in anybody's memory. And then it all came crashing down. On March 5th, I got a phone call from Governor Gavin Newsom that marked the beginning of this unprecedented year. On March 5th, the governor informed me about the Grand Princess circling outside of the San Francisco Bay with an outbreak of this new virus, the COVID-19 virus that was soon to be declared a global pandemic. Oakland entered this pandemic with compassion and humanity, and it has not stopped. I don't need to talk to you about the devastating impacts that we have suffered through in this year of 2020. I do wanna highlight three things that I believe we did well in the city of Oakland as we had to dash into a critical response. And that is we tested, we sheltered, and we connected. We were the first city in California to stand up free testing, first for our first responders and then to our whole community. And the first to offer a walk up testing site in the heart of the community most disparately impacted. And that was deep East Oakland with the Roots Community Clinic Center. We offered these free testing sites in places and with trusted messengers, health professionals from La Clinica de la Raza, the frontline healers, the Native American Health Center, the West Oakland Community Clinic, people that were trusted by the very individuals most at risk of not just contracting 
this, this deadly virus, but also of dying from it. And Oakland was recognized as, as being one of only two cities in the entire country that had better access to free testing and life-saving medical information in its most impacted communities, in its low-income communities of color than any other city in the United States. And San Francisco, by the way, was the other. We sheltered thanks to the amazing leadership of our governor. And he is getting a hard time right now, but I stand behind the leadership he has shown this year. He was the first governor to get FEMA to agree to allow us to use now vacant hotels to shelter our most vulnerable, our, our unsheltered brothers, sisters, neighbors who had health uh, vulnerabilities, who were disabled, who were elderly. And I am proud to report to you that in 2020, we got more than 2,000 of these vulnerable individuals off the streets and into four hotels that were again approved by FEMA down in the airport area, as well as a FEMA trailer kind of trailer park that the city of Oakland stood up in just 60 days, record time, 2000 people off the streets. Now I know that that is a drop in the bucket with the state of emergency that we are in, but that is profound healing. And as we move towards the end of this last year, we began the important work of ensuring that those vulnerable individuals do not return back to the streets when the crisis and the emergency funding is over. California put forward a competition called Project Home Key, where cities and counties could compete to acquire permanently these types of structures like the hotels. And as a mayor, I actually fought to get a little bit more flexibility, which Oakland took advantage of. And I'm very proud to report that between Project Home Key and other competitive programs, Oakland will be adding permanent affordable housing for our formerly homeless, more than 800 units and doing it in a way, once again, that is innovative. In addition to the two hotels that the county has purchased and now will convert into permanently affordable housing, the city of Oakland purchased an old dormitory used by CCAC, the College of Arts and Crafts in Rockridge that will be used both as interim housing for families and permanent affordable housing for formerly homeless seniors. The Inn at Temescal in that hipster neighborhood will now be permanent, affordable, supported housing for former veterans. And my favorite innovation, shared housing. BAX, uh, one of our most innovative nonprofit service providers here in Oakland, went out and purchased before the new year, 17 single family homes that are multi-bedrooms to allow our formerly homeless seniors to have a private space, but to also have a sense of community as between four and six of them actually share a house, a home with a backyard in a neighborhood. One of the gentlemen was toured around. They, they each one got to choose which house they most wanted to live in. Tears came to his eyes when he was shown the home that became his choice because it was literally around the corner from the very block where he grew up. That is bringing people home. And then finally, one thing that Oakland did well was keep people connected. We did it through the Great Oakland Check-In where more than 600 volunteers reached out to 20,000 mostly seniors living alone and connected them to meal delivery service, PPE, and just to check in on their well-being. And our favorite story that came out of that was Jenny and Jack. Jenny was one of our volunteers. Jack was the first person who picked up one of her calls they ended up talking for an hour. 
He was an elderly man, completely blind, living by himself. And he admitted to Jenny that for weeks, he had eaten nothing but peanut butter sandwiches. Not only did Jenny get him set up for our Great Plates meal delivery program, fueled by our amazing Meals on Wheels volunteers and the World Central Kitchen, but Jenny and Jack have adopted each other as granddaughter and grandfather. They still talk every week. I'm also so inspired by what we as a community accomplished with Oakland Undivided. When those schools shut down and our stu students were subjugated to distance learning, we already knew that about 25,000 Oakland households with school students were without a computer, an internet connection or technical support. Well, we knew we needed to change that. We asked and you answered in a matter of days, we raised $13 million to bring those three critical things to our learners and not just to them as students, but that connection with the rest of the world during this stay at home order that really connected whole families to resources that they could not have accessed without an internet connection. Jessica no longer had to sit on a park bench outside of a public library, hacking into their internet system so that she could complete her, her application to Stanford University. And Guadalupe, a parent who was letting her elementary school son participate on Zoom through her phone. Now her son logs in every day, has perfect attendance from his new Oakland Undivided laptop. And finally, we connected people through what I would call some bureaucratic jujitsu. Uh, you don't always think of bureaucrats as nimble or creative, but I am telling you, the city of Oakland workers rose to the occasion this year in ways I could never have imagined. In just 24 hours, they stood up a completely online free permitting system to let our struggling small businesses take their businesses out to the sidewalks, the parking spaces, sometimes even the whole street into lots so that we could keep earning money, keep people employed and gather together in ways that were safe at that time, as well as our nationally recognized slow streets program that allow families to be outside in a safe, socially distanced manner, to walk, to breathe fresh air and to give a little relief to, to our beloved lake that was getting a little overcrowded. That was 2020. As we come into 2021, we have to be focused. And like Ben Franklin first said, that we must all aspire to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That is my laser focus for 2021. And obviously we have to start with health. We cannot afford, sorry, to lose to lose another Jean Zahas. And we all have a role that we will need to play over this year so that that type of suffering and loss does not happen again. Every one of us must get this vaccine as soon as it is available to us. And I am laser focused on ensuring that Oakland is doing that as safely and effectively as possible. We also have to learn from the exacerbation of the disparities in health impacts that COVID-19 shone a bright light on but have been there all along by race, job class, and geography. I'm very proud of the recommendations that came from the COVID-19 Racial Disparities Task Force uh, that I stood up alongside Dr. Tony Eiten, Supervisor Wilma Chan, and Assembly Member Rob Bonta. And then finally, none of us can be healthy 
as long as homelessness is allowed to continue on our streets. We must end homelessness and we will need to do that through more permanent funding sources. And I, for one, support our president-elect Joe Biden's vision that housing choice vouchers, the, the entitlement to be able to cover the difference between your income and the cost of living where you are should be something that everyone is entitled to. And thank you, for Patricia Wells, for being here and running what is now that critical program through the Oakland Housing Authority. Wealthy, we all must get back to prosperity in 2021. And that will start with direct relief uh, the governor's announcements this week for both small businesses and struggling individuals are absolutely the right place to begin. And we must support his proposals as they come before California's legislature. And every time the city and the private sector has the opportunity to participate, that is where we must focus. And I, for one, am very excited for the long-term policy change around a guaranteed income. This idea of a universal basic income or guaranteed income, I believe is a far more effective and efficient way to lift people into self-sufficiency than adding yet another government program. So you will see one of the largest and most inspirational demonstrations of guaranteed income as a policy coming to Oakland soon. And then finally, wise. We cannot be wise, we cannot have wisdom until we get our kids back to learning. We have got to help expand these learning hubs, reopen our schools safely. We have to take this opportunity to not just lend out computers, but to close the digital divide for good, to stand up public broadband. This is now critical infrastructure. It is infrastructure of the mind. It is infrastructure to ensure that our children are going to be competitive and ready for those careers. And thank you for mentioning the Oakland Promise. That too is part of getting our kids to and through college and never forgetting the importance of education. So healthy, wealthy, and wise is my theme for 2021. And for Oakland, I'll add two more things, safe and solvent. Uh, safe, I welcome the debate and the examination of these calls to defund police and reimagine public safety. But in that conversation, we cannot allow crime to increase. And this year has been tragic with a huge increase in shootings and homicides. 102 of our beautiful brothers and sisters here in Oakland lost their lives to senseless violence. We must keep this front of mind. And solvent. You might think it's weird to end what's supposed to be an inspirational speech on the subject of governmental solvency, <laughs> but it is important in this time of, of fiscal strain on your city, just like COVID has impacted all of your businesses, it is impacting us as well. And we must be sure that we are building this government to last and serve its residents for many generations to come. And while solvency of government doesn't sound inspirational, I hope you think about this. If there is one thing that this last year, and frankly, these last 24 hours have shown us it is that government matters. It's not just the provider of services and infrastructure, the miracle of indoor plumbing. Don't take that for granted. <laughs> Roads, postal service, things that keep us connected and, and help us prosper. But it is our collective best selves. It is the one thing that during a profound moment of crisis, what we are experiencing right now, that can give a response, relief, aid. We also see that when people engage in their government, it is a force for positive change. 
that too is a lesson that I hope many of us what we experience this year. I hope we all reflect for one moment, particularly because of yesterday's incidents, that we cannot take our sacred American democracy for granted. And I thank you, each and every one of you Rotarians, because you are lifting up service and staying engaged. So thank you for your time today, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mayor Chef. You always do the best for us. I, I, let's have a big round of applause, and we can do it this way, is that's the way sometimes we do it on uh, virtually. But uh, you always come through for us, and we love having you a mayor. As uh, I like to introduce you all the time, my mayor, Libby Chef. <laughs> Thank you so much, Libby. It's uh, great, to, great to have you here. Now, I do think we do have a few questions, uh, but I want to also tell our group that was going to give the um, presentation on our homeless effort, I have to apologize, but we didn't have time for them at this particular time. It, but I think we have a question for one of them right at the beginning. Uh, Susie. Do you have a questions for us? Let my... I do, but okay. The first question I had was from Dudley um, Thompson. Um, he wants to know what are plans, visions for establishing businesses and all the new vacant storefronts and sadly vacant by pandemic spaces? Well, we are still not sure how many are really vacant. Many people boarded up their businesses because of the understandable civil unrest over the summer. Uh, and because many of them are temporarily closed, I am so hopeful that once this vaccination is distributed, that we are gonna see many of these businesses come back. I am lobbying every day to get as much aid directly to our small businesses. We cannot lose them. And so the city's role is going to be to continue to, you know, cut the red tape, make it easy for businesses to open as well as to prioritize relief. And, and we did that when we did get one slice of federal CARES Act dollars. Much of that went to direct grants to small businesses. And if you have a small business, even if you run a nonprofit or you're a sole proprietor, California just extended its small business grant program. So please go to CA Relief Grant. Dot org and apply for five to twenty-five thousand dollars free money uh, from the state of California. It's it's uh, just extended to January thirteenth is the new deadline. And again, the legislature has a proposal from the governor to more than double that pot of money. Speaking of vaccination, um, Sam Miller has a question: What can the city do to speed up the vaccination plan in Oakland? Uh, you know, I literally was meeting with the big city mayors of California last night. I will tell you at the beginning of this pandemic, we had a Zoom call every single night at 8.30 p.m. Uh, we still are meeting at least once a week. Last night, we met with Senator-elect or nominee Alex Padilla. We're all very excited. Uh, but the mayors of California are actually going to be recommending, you heard it here first, so if anyone's from the news, please don't quite <laughs> put this out there yet. But we are going to be asking for authorization for our firefighters to be able to administer vaccinations. Uh, we applauded the governor uh, allowing dentists to start administering vaccinations, but our first responders are your medical responders. Uh, our ambulance personnel, our firefighters, they're all trained in giving vaccination, in, in giving shots. Many of our police officers are as well. And so we uh, are really gonna be offering our services to speed the distribution. It cannot happen quickly enough. Okay, Stephen Lowe has questions regarding, regarding homelessness. Um, so how can Rotary be more proactive in dealing with aspects of homelessness beyond merely its apparent focus on housing. Um, he's talking about CASA, which was a, a very inspirational regional effort, uh, Bay Area wide to really look at addressing the housing crisis. Uh, and, and I think we have to provide housing at all income levels, but homelessness is, it is about housing supply, but it's also about health. 
It's also about income. Uh, so that that is absolutely where we have to uh, approach this issue. There is gonna be a proposal to the legislature to create an ongoing source of funding. Oakland was very fortunate. And again, we banded together with the big city mayors to get some one-time funds to help with homelessness because the state was seeing budget surpluses. But that, <laughs> that is over. And one-time funding is not gonna solve a systemic problem. The other thing that excites me, and this is gonna need political will, a lot of it, but this idea of making housing choice vouchers an entitlement, that means available to anyone who qualifies. I don't know if you've heard these heartbreaking stories of people who, and Patricia Wells could tell you better than anyone, people who are on the list to get a housing choice voucher uh, and wait for years and years, some of them living in their cars. Uh, I met one woman who's undergoing cancer treatment elderly woman, retired school teacher, living in her car, waiting for her name to come up on that list. That is not America. Our country is great enough that we should not be tolerating that. And so your support for what, what President Biden wants to do to expand the Housing Choice Voucher Program, which is a good public-private partnership, um, that is something that I believe Rotary could really get behind. And I know you have a specific um, project that you want to do in Oakland. And of course, we will partner with you on that as well. Uh, actually, let's get the last question from John Clausen. Uh, Susie, if you do that one for us, please. Yes, Mayor Schaff, will you meet with our Rotary Committee working with um, working on our Oakland Community Neighborhood proposed project sometime mm -hmm. soon? That's <laughs> well, you, you, you don't realize I kind of have been meeting with you. Um, <laughs> just like every successful business leader in this club, uh, everything I get done is because I hire people that are smarter and more uh, effective and, and have focus on particular issues than I have. And I know that Peter Redu, who is actually uh, in, in the audience today, has been meeting with your group. Uh, I'm happy to meet with you personally if you would like to, but I have been kept um, up to date on the meetings that Peter and the rest of the City of Oakland staff, Joe DeVries, Daryl uh, Dunstan, have been having with your group. So uh, not to fear, I have, I've been virtually in those meetings through um, the appropriate staff uh, that, that I know uh, are very, very familiar with the proposal. Thank you, Mayor Sheff, for being our speaker today, and thank you for that. Uh, answering that question because I think our group does want to meet with you at least uh, sometime personally and we can go over in detail with it and maybe take some suggestions from you about what it is that we should really be working on. Uh, yeah, no, I what I know of the proposal, it's very inspirational and Seth Butner, I'm never going to say no to you. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's good. <laughs> well, um, you know, this year our club is making the homeless crisis in Oakland a priority. And to that end, and as our gift to you for being our speaker of the day, in your honor, we are making a donation to support our unhoused residents in Oakland. Uh, where Jack, uh, put that on the screen. I think that we still have that uh, slide, uh, which uh, additionally, we want to give you our uh, centennial book which documents 100 years of service and friendship in the third oldest club in the Rotary world. Again, thank you for being our speaker. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming here to do this for us today, Mayor Sheriff. Everybody. Thank you, everyone. Well, I love those virtual <laughs> claps. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> uh, I, actually, I should have uh, him unmute everybody so we can clap all together. <laughs> Uh, yay! Thank you, Libby. Thank, Thank you, you, Rotary. You are so beautiful. Keep putting that service above self. All right. Thank you. David, uh, Rotarian David Stein, will you tell us about our speaker for next week? Well, we're going to continue with a little look at Oakland and Oakland politics. Our speaker next week is Dave Metz, who is the president of FM3 Research. 
here in Oakland. They do a lot of polling of what Oaklanders think and where they think we should be going and how, how we're doing. He'll talk about that. He'll talk about whether polls can be trusted at all, uh, which is his business, so it'll be an interesting take. And also talk a little bit about what the local elections meant. We have two new city council members, four new school board members. So it should be an interesting program. Please join us next week for Civic Thursday at Oakland Rotary. Thank you, David. And uh, thank you, Lou, for the thought for the day. Welcome our newest member, Jesse. Thank you, Jack, for introducing the women in Rotary, Gail, Carla, Shannon, Iris, and Mary. And thank you, Peter, for right, being ready to bring us up to date on the homeless effort. We'll see it next week for all you members. The mayor is going to see it soon, too, when we meet with her. And one big thank you to our sponsor for today's meeting, Winna Williams and her company, Family Dog Walkers. It was a great <laughs> meeting and great to start 2021. Jesse. Before I wrap up this meeting, do we have any bell ringers? Yes, we do have some bell ringers. Uh, Joe rang the bell for his wife. Bruce rang the bell for Mayor Schaff. Mm -hmm. David Stein rang the bell for Women in Rotary. Karen Freeman rang the bell for Women in Rotary. Beth Hillman rang the bell for Mayor Schaff and Women in Rotary. And Maya Woods rang the bell for Mayor Schaff. That sounds like five or six or seven uh, rings six. on the bell. Six. Six. Well, we'll make it seven. Okay. I'll ring the bell for Mayor Chef and the women and make it seven and then eight. I'll ring it for the women in Rotary as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this meeting, this I like to end this meeting as we always do. That's the way it went at the 5,322nd club meeting on December, I mean, on uh, January 7th, 2021, at Oakland Rotary number three, the third oldest Rotary Club in the world. Everybody remember, Rotary opens opportunities for service above self. And for now, this meeting of Rotary Club of Oakland is adjourned. <laughs>